Oh, baby. Welcome back to TFC. It is time for the box, box office breakdown. breakdown. Right, let's go. Thor The Dark World dominates and rises to the top in its opening weekend, bringing in $85.7 million. There he goes again. Jackass presents Bad Grandpas in a very, very distant second with $11.3 million for the weekend and $78.8 million total. Did you see Bad Grandpa? No. You didn't see it? I've seen enough Jackass. Where Do you want to see it? No. Oh, I want to see Bad Grandpa. I will that say little this. boy looks so cute. I would rent it, but I'm not going to spend 12 bucks for it. I okay. can watch an episode of Jackass and I see the see same thing. I see you. I see you on that one. I feel it. Okay, let's continue the breakdown. Yeah. Free Birds pulled in 11.1 million this weekend, making its total 30.1 million. In fourth is Las Vegas, with 11 million and a total gross of 33.5. And the fifth spot goes to Ender's Game with a 10.3 million weekend and 44 million total. That stinks for Las Vegas. Yeah, like they, it doesn't. The thing is, Las Vegas doesn't look bad. I mean, they pulled everyone and their mother into yeah, it. Yeah, it's Morgan Freeman doing comedy is just funny to me. Right. Because he's Morgan Freeman. Like he's God. If if I could pay Morgan Freeman to follow me around and narrate my life, I would do it in a heartbeat. Could like, you imagine? And Chris is overeating yet again. <laughs> You forgot Put to down the cheeseburger, cheese. Christopher. I'd be like, Morgan, don't tell me. Just do it. No, yeah, you're God. Because he's Morgan Freeman. He can do what but he it, wants. It's the thing of it Who doesn't look bad. Uh, Michael Douglas is in it. He's old. But he's married to Catherine Zeta-Jones. Yo. Which. Way to go, buddy. Yeah, buddy. Who I can't get mad at you. Can't get mad. I can't even remember. I can't remember who else is in it. Like, it's. I'm literally blanking. I'm like Ryan It's Howard just Morgan, because it's always Morgan. But it's, he's hilarious in it. He's, he's Morgan Freeman. If he's in it, it's good. Or at least it'll be. His, his part will be gold. If not, I call shenanigans. He calls shenanigans. There it goes. Yes. Okay. So let's get into the news. More news. Let's go. The day has finally arrived, where Blockbuster announced that it will be closing the few remaining stores it has left. New. No. <laughs> the chain video store declared bankruptcy in 2010 and was purchased by Dish in 2011. Dish plans to continue the Blockbuster brand through digital offerings including the Blockbuster at Home channel for the Dish Network and Blockbuster On Demand. Going out of rent, a DVD is now a thing of the past and the company closes its physical doors and moves on into the digital age. Your opinions on Blockbuster? Many, many memories. Right, every Tuesday, me, my dad, my sister, we'd fly over to Blockbuster, Weekends. not really fly there, but we'd get there and we'd always rent the best movie it was, that we thought. It's so long, Blockbuster. Good times, but you know what? I have a PS3. I don't need it to It truly around. is a thing of the past, Yeah, it though. is. It's, it's going under. Right? I mean, like, that's annoying Netflix, now to just drive. Continuing. The trio from the popular TV series Workaholics will be the stars of a much larger project, their own movie. Scott Rudden and Seth Rogen have allegedly teamed up to produce <laughs> a film starring the three men, Anders Holm, Adam Devine, and Blake Anderson. Although it stands untitled as of now, Holm will be writing the screenplay and series co-creator Kyle Nuacek We'll be directing it. Much is in store for these comedic stars, and we are looking forward to seeing the finished copy. What? Uh, I will say, I love, I like Workaholics. Mm -hmm. they, like, I do like the show. Like, if I'm sitting around, oh, I it's think on. It's, smart. it's It's very well done, very witty, very uh -huh. fun, and just like, literally, it reminds me of like what it used to be like when I used to work with my friends in certain stores and work in like retail, and I'm right. just goofing off and doing dumb stuff. Of course, I would be the one to get yelled at, and my buddy would be sitting there doing right. nothing, and he'd be like, oh, good job. And it's kind of, the things they come up with, it's kind of like Seinfeld. It's a show about absolutely nothing, but it's funny. But it's good. It's very much like Seinfeld. Like, Seinfeld was a show, as you said, a show about nothing, but, like, they did stuff that nobody else did. Like, right. Like, man hands, you know, like, they had Ugh. man, like, a woman with man hands, like, you see Jerry, like, she's like, oh, yeah, stuff <laughs> on your lip, and it's this big dude's hands, like, touching Jerry's face, and I'm like, that is just awkward sauce. Right? But... I love that show. Oh, sorry. Workaholics is a great show. Yes. Should we talk about my girl, Cameron Diaz? Let's talk about her. All right, so Cameron Diaz, who stars in Ridley Scott's new thriller, The Counselor, had to re-record her lines for the film after an early screening. The Fox executives made the decision after they thought that Diaz's Barbados accent was a bit Rihanna-ish. 
Diaz was not too thrilled, I wouldn't be either, to change, and that also didn't help the film in the box office with its less than impressive numbers. I never even heard of that movie. I had, it looks very, very good. The, I mean, What's it, it about? Do you know? I all? don't know offhand. I know, like, uh, Michael Fassbender plays, like, some sort of counselor or something like that. Michael some... Fox? Fassbender? I thought guy? you said Michael, like no, Michael no. J. Fox. No, no, he's not doing that. <laughs> Sorry. That's yeah, the mean. guy who played Magneto in, uh, Days of, uh, in X-Men First Class. But... From what I understand, it's like something goes awry. He's like some sort of political guy or something like that, and like something goes awry, and like he has to start shooting people and stuff. It's pretty badass. Why it does looks decent. Cameron Diaz have a Barbados accent? Because I guess she plays somebody from the Barbados. I really I don't, don't get know. it. I don't know. Why I, gotta, her? I have to do more research on it, but like it looks good. And it has like it has uh God, I'm trying, like Michael Foster Bender in it. Um, crap, I'm trying to think what else is in this movie. Brad, uh, yeah, Brad Pitt's in it. He like, is. Yes. And I haven't heard about it. Yes, it's a very like. Huh? It has, it's like a star-studded cast. It looks really good. It just... Well, that stinks. Which is hard flap. because it's a, it's a good... It's not, it doesn't look bad. Flap, but it flap, flap, yes, flap. it doesn't look bad. But getting on with it, Disney, who we just spoke about, Disney has recently announced a new effective business strategy to make as few movies as possible. Walt Disney Pictures <laughs> only produced two movies this year so far, Oz the Great and Powerful and The Lone Ranger, Both with flops. Saving Mr. Banks coming up soon. In fact, the only future plans Disney has to release Mag uh, Maleficent and a Muppet sequel. Disney will leave the filmmaking to its subdivisions, Pixar, Marvel, and Lucasfilm, because there are brands that include video games, theme park attractions, and toys. Disney's plan is to slowly focus more of its profit on its own consumer products, theme parks, and mm -hmm. TV shows instead of films. That's really smart. It's a smart move, but, like, here's the thing. I like, think it's a great idea, because both of those movies flopped. But the thing is, Lone Ranger, I don't even, what? Did you like Lone Ranger? I didn't see it yet and I wanted to. Right? No one has seen it. It's that kind of movie you're like, oh god, I want to see it so was, bad. From what I understand, it was way too long. Like, they took the script and oh. they made it too long and it was like, oh, way too much and all that's like, crazy. get over yourself, like, Disney. But the thing is, it, like, the Lone Ranger is a great character, a great mythos in the whole nine. It's a, it should have been a great right. film. And Johnny Depp. And Johnny Depp's a hell of an actor. Right. And him playing Tonto, I don't think he would have done a horrible job at it. And Ar Army Hammer's a good actor as well. Mm -hmm. And it's a good film. Like, it looks like it has the makings of, hey, this looks to be decent. Oz it really powerful. does. James Franco is phenomenal. Zach Braff Mila, my voices. girl. Mila, Mila Kunis. Kunis. Who I, huge crush on her. Who does it, man? Exactly. But, like, I that do. movie was I a good, do. it wasn't a bad movie. It was a good, I actually, I was I actually on. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it as well, but it was one of those movies <laughs> I wanted to see. I just don't have time. He's, like, over here talking about it. But no, it looked good. And he good. hasn't seen it. It looked good. It was actually when I was on the fi I was on on the couch a couple, like about a year ago, and that was one of the movies this past year I talked about. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, that's going to be coming out. It's going to be huge in 2013. I was wrong. All right. Well, speaking of Disney and Lucasfilm, an official date for the next Star Wars film is officially set. All right, nerds. Just kidding. That's rude. Thanks for hurting my feelings. Episode seven will release on December 18th, 2015. While there have been some worries that the script would not be ready soon enough. Filming is slated to start in the spring of 2014 with both Disney and director J.J. Abrams confident that the film will meet its deadline. J.J. Abrams, I trust you because you revitalized Star Trek, which I hadn't seen because I'm not a Trekkie. I just never got it. It was on at work today. Didn't but, watch it. But seriously, don't do what George Lucas did and try to kill Star Wars. Because that, he seriously. He there. I mean, there's, I'm probably in the minority with saying that the original, like the, the prequels, mm -hmm. weren't horrible. They could have been done better, but yeah. I understand where they went. Mm -hmm. George Lucas may have created Jar Jar Binks, who was an abysmal character to begin with. But I trust you. Don't screw it up, please. Because you will, you will kill my childhood. You will kill my childhood. I feel like in like this year that it's either a zombie movie or it's like a futuristic movie. Like Star Trek, we got Star Wars coming out, we got RoboCop coming out. I don't know. I think the zombies are starting to go underneath the rug, though. Thank God. Because zombie movies are boring. And I hate I zombies. Mean, they're not boring. No, I just don't like watching them. I'm scared to death of them. That's right. Because Chris is a little baby. No, I just don't like zombies that can nip up and run a 4 2 40. He's it's a not little my baby. Thing of a good time. My name's Chris and I'm a little baby. I just don't like zombies that can run, run faster than me. That scares like. So you're telling me, in real life, if you're sitting there minding your business, like, hey, I got an Ew. ice cream cone, eating an ice cream cone, and a zombie's like, if they're coming at you slow, you're going to be like, oh, yeah. First of all, I would never eat an ice cream cone, okay? Let's all get right. that down. So let's think here. You have some sort of ice cream treat or some sort of treat in your hand, and you're like, hey, good day. I'm enjoying my treat. 
and it a zombie comes up and starts chasing you, and he's running on a 4 2 right, so you're we got your futuristic pants. films, and we got zombies, yeah, but that's and, it. But that's right. it. And, but come up with something original, Hollywood. All right. Well, guys, that's it for the final cut. I'm Kelly. And I'm Chris. Thank you for watching, and uh, hope to see you next time. Bye, veterans. Thank you. And thank you again, veterans. Oh, baby.